Hello and welcome to another edition of Toys from the Attic. For today's episode, I thought we'd be taking a look at Toy Biz's Ghost Rider action figure. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at this guy. Although making cameos in several of Marvel's animated shows, Ghost Rider never received a cartoon series of its own. Despite this, Toy Biz still produced a line of action figures based off the Ghost Rider comics. Danny Ketch is just one of a handful of people to be bound with the spirit of vengeance and carry the mantle of Ghost Rider. Using a thick heavy chain as his melee weapon, his most powerful attack is his penance stare, an ability that lets his enemies feel and suffer all the pain that they've caused to others over the course of their lives. Alright, so here we have Marvel and Toy Biz's Ghost Rider action figure. Now the Ghost Rider line of toys actually came out when Toy Biz was starting to phase out their 6 inch line of figures. After that they were starting to kind of scale them up to either 10 or 8 inch lines. And those ones didn't really fit in with all the figures that they made in the past. Well except for the to Hulk toys that they made. It was one thing I really liked about Toy Biz is that whether you're buying X-Men, Iron Man, Fantastic Four, or even Spider-Man. All their action figures fit in very uniformly. It was like you were really building the Marvel Universe. The other little downside about this guy, well, not so much him the, as the action figure, it's just the lack that there was a cartoon show to go with this guy. I remember going to my friend to the toy store and seeing these guys on the shelves and being really excited, thinking, wow, they're going to make a Ghost Rider a animated series. I'm going to learn a little bit more about the character. But sadly, they never did. They ended up basing these guys off the comic book. I did, it actually took till the live action movie for me to learn a little bit more about the whole character, but uh, we're not going to go into that. As far as the sculpt goes, it's pretty detailed. It really shows just how much uh, Toy Biz was actually improving since their first line of figures back in the early 90s. I really like the sculpt of his skull right here. And they really solved that flaming head look. You can see that there's a few bits of uh, flame on the main skull and then the rest of the fire is just layered uh, on top of each other. There's a little bit of orange, yellow. From the side it kind of looks like it's being blown back by the wind but from the front it really helps sell. There's also just enough little detailing on the jacket to help sell that it's some sort of material or actually leather. However, um, because it's all black, some of the buckles and stuff are a little bit lost. There's a different repaint of this guy that came with his bike that actually shows a lot more detail, but we'll get into that guy in a little bit later. There's also uh, the spikes on him there. Even though they look kind of dull, they are actually still quite pointy and actually hurt. He's the one character I'm not really looking forward to accidentally stepping on one day in the future. I also really like the little chains on his boots right here. Now, as far as his articulation goes, he's actually fairly decent. Um, his head can move side to side and his arms can move up and down. He has elbow articulation, but he also has wrist articulation. This allowed him to actually hold on to the motorcycle that, well, like I said, you would buy later on. And his legs actually had a lot more articulation too. Not only could they move up and down, but they could also move out to the side. And he had some nice knee articulation as well. Now, as far as his accessories go, he actually came with a long glow-in-the-dark chain. It was just soft rubber, but still it actually went along with his action feature. The idea was you would just wind up his arm like this. Let me try to do it a few times. Get it to, I don't want to break the gears. Ah, there we go. And then you just press this little tab on his back right here. And his arm would start to swing. And he, the idea is he would actually swing his whip around. The last little accessory that he came with was the little uh, glow-in-the-dark chain on his belt. It's something that I don't really want to take off too much because uh, my experience from the Ninja Turtles uh, action figures, like these soft rubbery um, accessories, once you take them off, they're a real big hard pain in the butt to get back on. I also will apologize too that I don't have his whip anymore. I used to play with this guy with my friend all the time, and I think that's one of the accessories that my friend ended up scooping up with his action figures when we'd play. And so sadly, I just don't have it anymore. Now as I told you they came out with a recolored version of the character which you can see right here and because his jacket is in a solid jet black you can see a lot more of those details actually pop out. Some nice little carvings right here on the top of his jacket and the gray buckles actually really help pop against the slightly darker gray. But basically this is the exact same character with only a few slight differences. I mean his uh, belt is slightly different you can see it has a buckle here at the front and only one little tab right here on the back. The other little notable difference is his little action feature switch is now a little knob and he doesn't take quite as many turns to actually wind up his arm and there is a real big difference in power. You can see just how much faster that is. Now as I've told you before in the past I really don't like getting recolors of characters especially if it's the same exact uh, mold. 
However, this guy actually came with the bike accessory, so in my mind I was pretty much just buying the bike for the more accurate Ghost Rider and getting him as a bonus. Now the Ghost Rider motorcycle is a fairly decent vehicle and it rolls nice and smoothly over most surfaces. It doesn't suffer from that squeaky wheel problem either that a lot of vehicles had at the time. Actually seeing him sit down on the bike, you can see the need for a lot of that extra articulation in the figure. His hands actually grip the handlebars very tightly, and his feet actually rest on some little pegs right here, allowing him to stay in his position very good. Even holding him upside down, you can see he doesn't move all that much. The flames on the wheel are okay. I mean, there's just enough there to get the overall point across. You can't expect the same level of detail on his head to be on the wheels themselves. The little flaming skull right here on the chain are actually a softer rubbery plastic that actually glows in the dark which I'm okay with it this shape right here is just kind of plain if you look at it so this helps kind of break it up and adds a little bit more flavor and detail right there as far as the overall look of the bike goes it's a little bit more reminiscent of what he had in the comic books at the time which I'm okay with I've always really dug this design I know some people don't but hey I like it there's a little kickstand down here at the bottom which you can put down to keep them from rolling around or if you just want to kind of have them stand upright. However, the wheels are thick enough to where he's pretty well balanced without it. Now the first action feature for this vehicle was uh, you had some little uh, flaming buzz saws that actually fit into the wheel right here and they never really like they never snapped in there. If you had them at a certain angle they would just kind of roll out. So naturally yeah I lost them sadly to say. But the whole idea was you just kind of pull these little tabs back, let them go, and they would fire out. The last action feature on this thing was there's a little tab right here that when you pressed it, the skull faceplate right here would actually fire out like a battering ram. Granted, it probably never really did that in the comic books or the few times he actually appeared in some of the animated cartoons. But a lot of toys actually had this feature, so I've just kind of accepted it as a thing that 90s toys did. All in all, the bike is a very good vehicle and they really happen to complement each other when you have them together. Now as I said before, these guys can glow in the dark, and actually seeing them light up like this makes them look even cooler in my book. Toy Biz never really added that glow feature to too many of their other figures, but I'm really happy that they added it to the Ghost Rider line. It just seems to fit somehow. Seeing that flaming skull actually light up and glow like that just makes it seem a little bit more badass. This guy has tremendous display potential during the day and even at night. And if you're a fan of the character, I would definitely say try tracking one down for yourselves. Anyways, this has been a look at Toy Biz and Marvel's Ghost Rider action figure. Once again, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you've seen today, please feel free to like, subscribe, or leave a comment below in the comment section. Any advice for the show will be greatly appreciated. Who knows, something you suggest may appear on the show in the future.